Hey guys, it's Helen Hart Smith here again with Kathy. What are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know. I had a free minute and a half, so I thought maybe I'd come over and we could do some top tens. Let's film some top tens. Hey guys, um, happy New Year. Mm -hmm. It is. A new I feel year. like we can still say that. It's like the fourteenth. Yes. So we can we can still do that. So um, yeah um. We're going to do a top 10. We are going to do What's a top the subject 10. of that top 10 um, going to be? It is another top 10 herbs that every witch should have. So the the very first the first three top 10s that we did were um uh stones, herbs and uh oils. oils that every witch should have. And they were so popular that um I know we've done another stone. Have we? Top ten. Yep, okay. we um, did another another one. top ten stones, and so this is another, another top, top ten, ten herbs that every witch should have. So uh, you know, we never did work out. Who wants to go first? Um, I don't know. I think you should just go ahead and go first. You, you think so? Yeah, why not? Okay. Well, I'm feeling generous. Like it matters. There's ten. We're <laughs> it's equal. Right. It's equal time here. So what's the first one there, Missy Tata? The first one on the list is mugwort, which um, the Latin name is Artemisia vulgaris. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of other names like felon herb, naughty man, naughty man, naughty um, man, sailor's tobacco, and Saint John's plant. And it probably got naughty man because. Um, that is the key component of absinthe. Oh, naughty. That's why it's, um, I, I, if I, I believe I'm correct in that. Um, that's because it's the Artemisia vulgaris that is the strain of the Artemisia family that makes absinthe. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> I'm not an herbologist, but I kind of dig folks that are. So, <laughs> what else do we know about mugwort? Well, it is feminine, and mm. it is associated with Venus, the Earth, mm. Artemis, go figure, go figure, and Diana. Nice. Um, it is also associated with strength, psychic powers, protection, prophetic dreams, healing, astral projection, and it can produce visionary dreams. Mm -hmm. If you... Um trying to remember is that if you smoke it or if you make a tea you know i i wouldn't suggest making a tea from mugwort i would check first yeah, yeah. i don't think it's a thing i don't think i don't think mm -hmm. it's a good thing but i have um used it in incense mm -hmm. before um it's a very good protection herb it keeps away the dark forces it can protect children if you carry it it can bring you home safe from journeys um, it keeps us aware of our spiritual direction. Now this says, a mm -hmm. mugwort infusion sweetened with honey will mm -hmm. enhance divination. So that would be a tea. Mm, okay. Uh, and it uh, increases lust. That's right. And for t that's where the naughty man. Absinthe. That's where the naughty <laughs> man comes in. Naughty um, men. Lust and fertility. Mm. Yeah. Mugwort is just, it, it can be used for so many things. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, it's good to have in your tool bag, basically. Right. So, all right. So, next on our list is the the Mighty Lavender. Mm-hmm. Lavender, lavender. Um, so many people like lavender. There's there's basically two, um, like, popular, because I think there's more than yeah. the two varieties. Yeah, I know of at least three. Um, yeah, because there's, like... Didn't we have like a Tuscan one there's, going on or something yeah, like that? There's an English. An English and French. Yeah. So they're very regional. Yes. Um, and I like one and I don't like the other. I agree with you. And I don't know and which, I don't one, know which one, one is which. One of them yeah. gives me migraine and the other one is fine. Yeah, one of them hits me as a, mm -hmm. I don't like that smell. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know which one it is. A lot of people like lavender. Yeah, so, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing mercury magic, um, lavender is a good herb to use for that. Um, the element that it's connected to is air. Um, the deities that um, lavender are sacred is sacred to would be Aradia and Hecate. Okay? Hecate. Or Hecate, depending on how you 
um, pronounce, it. pronounce the syllables. Um, so its basic powers are to induce sleep, um, give long life, um, peace, wishes, protection, those kind of magic, love, purification, um, connection to God awareness. Um, it's mm. a good it's a good herb to or incense to use when meditating. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Um, it's good for working with your fears um, and acceptance. Um, you wear lavender to draw love. Um, it's a symbol of truth and parity um, and pure joy. Uh, so, oh, this is interesting. Traditionally, fragrant bundles of lavender were placed in the hands of women during childbirth to bring courage and strength. What you think about that? I'm remembering my horrible mm -hmm. experience with childbirth and thinking nothing would have helped except drugs, which I didn't get. Because <laughs> it went too long, right, or something? Uh, no, I was actually pretty short, but by the time I asked for drugs, they told me it was too late. So, mm. so um, for medical uses, it's a really it has really strong antiseptic qualities. So mild infusions make a good sedative or headache treatment mm. um, and digestive aid. And again, I would say that taking any any herb internally, I would talk to somebody. Check with your doctor. Yeah, who knows more than we do. Mm -hmm. Check with an herbalist. Check your... Read a um, book. Check your medicines contraindicators. Right. Because you don't want to take something that's going to not make your medicine not work. Right. Um, it's really good to use... Um, as um, on your cuts and, and burns and things like that. Um, I've actually treated cellulitis with a blend of lavender and tea tree. Mm -hmm. And those are two oils, two of the few oils that I will put directly on my skin. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them you shouldn't do that. They're not too harsh. Correct. So, right. yeah, there's lavender just for you guys. What's next? Well, the next one is not actually an herb. Yeah, but it's... It's a mineral. I don't know how it made this list, but it did. I'm not sure, but... But talk about it. Is it is <laughs> something that every witch should have because it is so versatile. And it is salt, in case you didn't figure that out. Um, it is feminine, and it corresponds with the earth. It's awesome for cleansing, purification, for protecting, for healing... Um, and it absorbs energy, and by that we mean any kind of energy, so be careful you're not infusing Pulling what you don't salt want to get with rid negativity. of. Um, mm -hmm. You can sprinkle it around an area to absorb energy, sweep it up and discard it. I actually saw a really interesting article on Facebook today. About, I saw that. About um, sweeping with salt, so you would take salt mm -hmm. and maybe another herb or two and sprinkle it around the floor that you're sweeping, and then sweep it up and discard it. Because that would help cleanse the energy in the room. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting that you shared that today. Yeah. And we were doing this today. Right. right. Maybe that's why it made the list. So that uh, we could share with everyone else. Maybe. That little ditty. So um, I'm sure most of us have heard about using Epsom salt, which is a form of salt, in a bath to help draw pain from sore bodies. It's also... Mm -hmm. Um, if you get a sore throat, you can gargle with salt water. Definitely. Um, okay, glasses. Um, <laughs> see, uh, ritual bath with salt in the water or salt applied directly to the skin and often mixed with oil for comfort, then wash down the drain can help to an individual to rid him or herself of energies as well. So another thing you could do is use um, like some olive oil and some salt and some essential oils and in the shower rub yourself with that. Yep, make so yourself up a little scrub. Yep. And and we've done that before. I, yeah, I usually use uh, brown sugar, but you can mm -hmm. use salt as well. Mm-hmm, yep. Got it. Very uh, nice brown sugar to sweeten things. I don't want to know what you're sweetening. No, the, the article <laughs> I was reading suggested using sugar to sweep with too to sweeten your home. It was it was pretty. Oh that oh, oh okay I see yeah. okay I didn't actually ha I didn't have time to read the article. Oh, I see. I, I mean, what? try to read things before I you, post them. Well, okay, right. How so that's you? salt. <laughs> Next on the list is sweet grass. Now a lot of people, you know, I originally connected sweet grass to. Um, Native American spiritualism, that's where I first came into contact with it. 
uh, but I still use it today. And so I figured we're going to share sweetgrass with y'all. So the only major, well, it's not the only and it's not the major, but um, the only thing that I found online, like when it comes to like correspondence for sweetgrass is in Calling Spirits. Um, and so it's used ritually to bring in spirits. Um, so, and that's a pretty broad term. So um, I would suggest if you were using it for that purpose to be very specific about whatever spirits you're calling in. Right. Okay. Um, so, but aside from that, in Native American spiritualism, in sh shamanistic practices, it's good for cleansing and for purification. And so that's um, basically what I use um, sweet grass for. Um, sweet grass, like I said, it's um, a sacred plant to uh, Native Americans. It's actually one of the one of four sacred plants along with tobacco, sage, and red cedar that are considered sacred to the First Nations, Inuit, and Matisse peoples. I hope I'm pronouncing Matisse right. I think I am. I'm not sure. Um, so it's known for its sweet scent when you burn it. So that's partially why I like it. Um, and um, so if you want to if you want to harvest your own sweet grass and braid it for yourself, um, it's best to harvest it in late June to July. Um, and you, what you want to do is cut the strands low to the ground. You don't want to. You want to be aware of the root system, and you don't want to pull the roots out. So you want to cut it low. Um, and I really dug this because I was um, introduced to sweet grass by friends that were Anishinaabe. Um, some might call it Chippewa, some might call it um, Ojibwe, um, but the Anishinaabe people believe that sweetgrass is the hair of Gosh oh. Goshunan, um, or the Mother Earth, and when it's braided, the strands represent love, kindness, and honesty. That's pretty sweet. I love that. Yeah. It's sweet grass. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. What's next? Um, next is yarrow, and you didn't have a whole lot. So no, I... I didn't. There, I mean, I, I put had what I. So I googled real quick. <laughs> Why do you? Okay. <laughs> you should have googled earlier, young lady. Uh, you know, I asked you if you wanted me to look up anything, and you were like, "No, no, it's okay." And I was like, "Okay, I gotta leave work early today anyway, so no big deal." Okay, so the next one is yarrow. It is associated with Aphrodite, Hermes, the Horned God, and Achilles. Ooh. Yeah, ruled by Venus and the element of water, it is associated with the seventh chakra. Mm. Um, it is used for divination and love spells and um, can be used for dream pillows. Mm -hmm. Rubbing your eyelids can cause enhance psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. It can use, be used in incense or oil to cleanse the aura and, again, for divination. Um, you can drink the tea prior to divination. It can help you connect and focus your mind on a specific issue. Um, it can be useful for communication with a loved one and when in times of strife. It can help you and your loved one to um, see things from the other point of view. Now, something I thought was really interesting, um, hanging a bunch of yarrow over the bed on your wedding night was supposed to ensure love lasting for seven years before oh. you stay married for longer than seven years. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to switch it out every seven years. Uh, I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, adding it to the bouquet or garland worn by the bride or groom does the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can um, hang it over a cradle to protect a baby from witches trying to steal the soul. Because we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. um, it can be a charm for pregnant women to have an easy labor. Mm -hmm. That's another thing there. Mm -hmm. um, you can strewn, strow, strow, throw it across the threshold to keep away um, unhelpful spirits. Mm. I and, like that. And yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. You can stuff also, I, I'm assuming that for that same type of thing, you could grow it. Oh, yeah. So um, if you watch Supernatural, it's grown at Crossroads where they um, summon Crossroads demons. Or in real life, you can grow your own <laughs> and, and it'll harvest protect it, your property. <laughs> and it'll and protect your property. It's um, it's actually a an annual. Um, it will come up year after year. That's a um, perennial. 
Oh yeah, I got, you know what? I get those stupid. I get them mixed up. Annual it's a perennial. You have to plant every year. Perennial yeah. means they come up all the time. It's a perennial. It comes up year after year, and it's available. It's it's clumps of little flowers. Oh, they're so pretty. Um, and they come in different colors. They do. White, yellow, and pink, I actually red. Found some wild. Um, in the next to where I work, there's this unused field that has a lot of different plants, and I harvested, wildcrafted a whole bunch of it this year. Awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really nice. It's really it's yeah. a really good. And it, plant. yarrow also has a whole lot of uh, healing attributes. It helps um, detoxify the body. Um, can be used to break fevers. It can be used to, I don't know what this word means, stipitic? Stipitic? Stipitic. It helps with hemorrhoids. Well, and on okay. that note. On that note, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so next on our list is verbane. Um, verbane is feminine in energies. It's connected with uh, the planet Venus and with Earth. The deities that it is sacred to is Sierdwin, Mars, Venus, Aradia, Jupiter, Thor, and Juno. Oh. Did you know? You know, you don't to hear too much about Juno. <sighs> well, yeah. Hmm. Juno? No. Um, so magic that you can use Vervain for it would be love, protection, uh, purification work, Peace, money, can't we all use some help with that? Um, youth, staying youthful, whether that, you know, that can be just a state of mind, you know, kind of a thing. I need help with that sometimes. Uh, chastity, sleeping, healing, um, it turns back negativity. It's also a favorite uh, herb for poets, singers, and bards. So if you want some help with that kind of stuff, and you're a singer, poet, or bard, you might want to look into some vervain work um, because it inspires artistry and it mm. instills a love of learning. Very nice. I like. I, I like have. A, I always have vervain on hand. Oh, interesting. So yeah. Mm -hmm. What's next? Next is mullen. I love mullen. Yeah. Oh my god. So it is associated with the zodiac sign of Libra. It is feminine. The planet Saturn and the element of fire. Circe is the goddess. It can be used for protection, courage, and health. You can carry it to protect yourself from wild animals in the wild. You need that when you go up to the cat. I'm um, pretty sure they're not going to catch the side by side. Yeah, well. Yeah. What if it breaks down? Then we're in trouble. Better, better to be safe yeah, than sorry. Yeah. Mullen. Better Nate than Lever. You can use it to instill courage and invoke the fire element, and then it was often used to light sacred fires. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because the stock of a mullen is right. like that's, it was used as a torch. That's the next thing. You oh. can soak it in vegetable oil and that's use it as a that. torch and so in. <laughs> Um, mullen is good for the lungs. You can use it to make tinctures for sore throat and dry coughs. You mm -hmm. can gargle it um, for sore throats and coughs. And the infused oil is used for earaches, wounds, on um, salves for wounds, eczema, and hemorrhoids. You're getting all the hemorrhoid action. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, chronic respiratory disorders, fevers, sore throats, um, Burns, bruises, frostbites, uh, it can be used to treat asthma, diarrhea, colic, gastrointestinal bleeding. I think I'd go to the doctor first. <laughs> uh, migraine, joint pains, and gout. And it's a sedative and a diuretic. The, you know, I actually remember reading at some point, and I'm not saying that anybody should do this, but I heard that... Um, Check with your doctor. Yeah, I heard that... Um, um, folks have been known to smoke mullen leaves to help with lung issues. Hmm. Now, I have never done that. Um, I can't imagine why it would be good, but... Have I you mean, used the incense for lung issues? No, but I've actually... I purchased the tincture, mm -hmm. and I've used the tincture. Yeah. It does not smell good. But you don't... You put like 10 drops in your water... It does smell, but not as bad as straight up. Nice. Um, and you, I'm reminded that I've done that. I feel like I should try it again because 
I've had some lung problems lately. So, right. yeah. Um, next up, St. John's Wort. I hear that all, I hear about St. John's Wort all the time. Lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, it is a masculine energy herb. Um, it's connected with the sun, and therefore it is also connected with the element of fire. It is sacred to Lou because of that. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Lou is a sun god. It's got little yellow flowers. Right. Makes total sense. So um, it's really good for protection against evil spirits for magical purposes. Um, it's good for ensuring health and happiness, and it's good for strength. A lot of people will use St. John's wort to combat um, PMS and mm -hmm. menopause, emotional. Yeah, stuff there's a the ton of health and stuff. depression. Mm. Yeah, see, I haven't used St. I haven't. I'm not totally familiar with St. John's wort, but I know that it's got some good stuff. And it seems like I found a spell that you could use it to draw money. Mm, that would make sense. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Seems like. All right, I'm down. Um, so we're, oh, wow, we're almost done already. Mm, two more. We're just chatting away. Gone with your bad self. That's the way we always are. Da, 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 da. Right. <laughs> All right, so the next herb is elderberry, and I love elderberry. Mm. Elderberry is awesome. It's a, a very good all-around plant. Uh, it is associated with the zodiac sign of Libra. It is feminine, and the planet is Venus. Um, it's water associated with water. The deities are, of course, Venus and Hulda. The magical properties would be exorcism, protection, healing, prosperity, and sleep. You can scatter elderberries to the four corners of your home for protection. I love that. Although they may they stain. They look like little turds. They may stain. So <laughs> yeah. Be careful. You can, um, you can make a decoction of elderberries made into a syrup for winter colds. And we've done that. We have done that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also um, make an elderberry jam or mm. elderberry wine mm -hmm. for the same similar purposes. Mm -hmm. The flowers are also useful medicinally in many ways. Check with your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, it can be used topically for infections, inflammation, and swelling. You can... Uh, create a wash to purify your skin. Uh, the tea is good for sore throat to speed Whoa. recovery from cold and flu. Totally. And relieve respiratory distress. And look, there's the jams and cons okay. conservatives. Conserves. Conserves. Um, there's cough a, drops. There's a cough lot. Drops. There's a lot of products um, that you can purchase now on the market. There are elderberry cough syrups, elderberry cough drops, right. and things like that. So um, it seems like you know the general public has kind of become aware of um, those well, medicinal qualities and that or marketing the them. Alternate mm -hmm. health places are trying to capitalize upon that so they're making it more available. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. Right. It doesn't mean just because they're not necessarily going about it the right way doesn't mean that the stuff isn't helpful. Mm -hmm. For sure. Just be careful and don't avoid your doctor to drink elderberry wine. Last on the list <laughs> is myrrh. Myrrh, myrrh, myrrh. I love myrrh. 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 It smells so good. Um, and <laughs> apparently my myrrh information is just sad because I only have um, some magical uh, uses for myrrh. Uh, it's good for protection, which I think we've heard a lot um, on this list. Um, so lots of protection magic uh, going on with these herbs, it seems like. It's good for exorcisms, um, it's good for healing, and it's good for uh, spirituality. Um, I will say that um, myrrh is sacred to Bridget. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's also suitable for Ra, Isis, Adonis, Leto, uh, Poseidon, Neptune, Latona, and Protogonos. Whoa, that's a cool name. Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, so it resonates with the energy of Mars. Um, what else we got here? Uh, myrrh oil and incense is used in aromatherapy for respiratory and oh, digestive health hmm. and to encourage a sense of tranquility and serenity. Um, oh, it's good for coping with loss. The fragrance is good for coping with loss. Um, and helps to heal the body, mind, and spirit um, after a devastation. Um, it's, it's 
goes, it's paired nicely with other resins because it is a resin. Um, so it's paired, it goes well with frankincense or with Kapal um, or Benzoin or Dragon's Blood. So those are some really nice things. You'll see those mixed together. Like generally, frankincense and myrrh are together. Right. Sweet baby Jesus. Maybe, Sweet so. baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I yep. had to go there. Those wise Sorry. men had, had a good thing going on there. Yep. <laughs> All right. So there is another top 10 herbs that every witch should have. So if we've missed something between this one and the original one, just let us know. Definitely. We're like, up to doing another another top 10. Of course. We, we're top 10 queens around <laughs> here. Um, but one other thing that I want to point out, too, is just because these are the ways that we work with um, these particular, these 10 herbs, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that there aren't other ways out there. And as always, we encourage you to make a connection, a relationship with these uh, plants right. yourself Investigate. and see how do they want to work with you. Right. Because that's the most important when it comes to your magic. So, right. all right. So that's going to be it for this top 10. Uh, if you enjoyed it, or um, learned something from it, what should they do? Um, they should give us a thumbs up. Right. If right. they haven't done so already, what should they do? Subscribe. Because why wouldn't you want to? Um, <laughs> because we're delightful. Right. Um, I will put in the description box, I will put this list for um, an, an easy reference. Um, so you can kind of look at you that. You should also put a link to the original top 10. I would love to do that. Sure. Um, so I will definitely do that. Um, there's a playlist on the channel of all the top 10s. So you can reference all the top 10s there. Um, but I will put a link there. And maybe I'll put a link to the playlist too. Oh, yeah. That's, That's an idea. idea. Um, so we'll, I'll do that. So we want to know what kind of herbs you like. Do you use any of these 10 herbs? And what do you use them for? What's your favorite? You know, those types of things. Let's right. spark a discussion, sure. why don't we? Um, or you can always email at heartofthewitchespath at yahoo.com. And there's an Instagram. There's Instagram. There's links in the description box there's for Facebook. Instagram and Facebook. And I'm just reminded I want to put a link to your Instagram. Okay. In that description box too. Okay. I haven't done that yet. We talked about that before. We have. Um, and I just remembered. Just so hey, what is that? <laughs> it's okay. I haven't posted a whole lot lately on my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So, all right. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for walking the path for a little while with us. And until next time, blessed, blessed be. be.